So last week, let's see, did I put the link? Right, we, we just came up with ideas, right? And not even ideas that would be best done with electrical engineers, right? So, um, so the thing is, is um, you know, if we have a problem, right? And yeah, here's, you know, the thing, right? If, if all you have is a hammer in your tool set, right, is this old joke, every problem looks like a nail, right? And, um, you know, just to be wildly generic, right? Right, if my tool set was a lawyer and I see a problem, right, then, you know, law would be, you know, getting a law enacted would be my solution. Um, you know, if I'm poli sci, you know, political, right, I'm just gonna say some kind of a, negotiation, right? Which, you know, lately sometimes it can seem that, you know, if you have two people and they're negotiating, it doesn't really matter what the facts are as, as an EE would say a fact is, it, would, it might seem that it's just power, right? Who has the power? Um, now I'm just, This is grossly, uh, I'm really generalizing to these other majors, right? So the thing is, is, you know, what, what would somebody not familiar with electrical engineering, right? There's a problem, the solution is usually some $400 part because it's, cheaper, easier to buy a new one than to repair the old one, right? That could, <laughs> that, that could be a joke, right? Or, um, throw a computer at it, right? And so if the problem is something to do with education, EEs or tech-minded people they just think the computer is the solution to everything, right? Where a teacher might have a completely different idea or everybody else, right? Even the hammer probably has an opinion on how to teach, right? So, um, Hey, Ryan, just saying hi. Thanks for coming. Good morning. Yeah. Good morning. Thanks for having so, me. Um, <laughs> so anyway, I've been trying to think, you know, what is our, like in some ways, right, what is our tool set? That's actually kind of easy to describe. And that was what Ed was kind of saying is, give me a list of courses, right? And then I'll know what to do. But if we kind of take it up, right? Let's, let's think about, you know, what is it that EEs are doing, right? And then even our medium is easy to talk about. Right, because our medium is 
electricity and magnetism, right? Um, you know, for all the way from DC up to, uh, you know, terahertz waves, optics, gamma waves, things like that. Anything to do with electricity and magnetism, right? But also what can be forgotten is that that's part of it. But in order to do that, you have to have your physics, your chem, and your math, right? In order to be able to work in our medium or, you know. So yeah, what is like, what do we do, right? And um, yeah, we move data, right? And moving data, you know, can be depending, right, low power, unless, uh, you know, we're transmitting, um, you know, a cell phone tower or something like that. And then, we also move things like, maybe we could call it big power, right? cars, heating things, you know, robots, rail guns, right? So we're tending to do these two things, right? We're either moving data around, right? Um, or we're moving a lot of power around, right? And, um, which then doing all of that, right? We're always wanting to do that automatically, right? So we've all had a power supply right on our bench. Right, and if you want to control the voltage to a certain voltage, you can sit there and turn the knob and set it to whatever voltage uh, current that you desire, right? And if you're working on PG&E, you could try to have people there, the, um, the grid operators are actually doing that, but it's happening so fast, right? And it's so complex that you can't, you can no longer have people just sitting there with knobs doing it, right? So we're trying to automatically control things, right? Well, let's just take that one idea. So we could call it, we automate things, right? Um, and so when we talk about automation, right, well, there's a lot of math involved, right? And then there, there's a lot of, how do we do it? There's a lot of circuits involved, right? So now we're kind of back into our medium. We're moving electricity around. We're talking about math. But and then I'm talking about circuits, right? Which is, you know, we could say it's like, like applied physics, but we're not physicists in that we're trying to find the truth. We're trying to use physics to design something, right? So then that leads us right back to our tool sets, right? And we're just talking about automation, but there's two ways to automate, right? We have continuous time. We have well, I'm just going to use our buzzwords. We have analog. We have digital, and what is often forgotten 
when we're first learning oh, mixed mix signal, right? Well, digital. E118, right? Leads to 120, leads to hmm. I forgot the name of the course right now, but it's the microcontroller. I think it's is it 178? Um that's another that's another that's another digital course, yeah. But I'm talking about just automatic control. Control theory is 132. Right. But I um, hadn't gotten. That's power engineering, 134. That's power electronics. <laughs> Which one are you looking for? Yeah, I've totally spaced it. I just haven't been advising in a long time. Um, I just gonna. I just want to read this again. One seventy seven. I just. I know it said power. Power systems. No, that's right. That's all right. You know what? I gotta look it up. Right. So EE 118, right, you learn how to control data, right? 120, it's data and like a little robot, right? So things are moving around, right? Um, so this is all digital, right? Um, and then not only that, but to learn how, so this, yeah, you lately, you start with an FPGA. Here you use a microcontroller. And then to bring up 178, you dig deep into an FPGA, right? Now, yeah, FPGAs, they can be used to mine Bitcoins. They can use digital filters, uh, AIs, right? Um, machine learning systems. Um, but right now we were just talking about the one thing, automation. Okay, oh, there's somebody in the chat. 138, that's it. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. And so then 138, right? That's more in detail and that uses a microcontroller as well. All right, and I'm gonna think I'm a little bit out of space here. So, all right, so that's one way to go about just, um, do, you know, automating things. Now, again, what could we be automating? We could be automating the grid. We could be automating robots. We could be having self-driving cars. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, Tracking a satellite. Um, you know, even <laughs> your coffee maker, right? So then, um, so that was the digital land, right? So the analog end or continuous time, right? That's EE110. Right. And then what's our kind of medium of choice or circuit of choice? Op amps. And just in case someone's following along, I should have said FPGA, field programmable gate array. And it's a, um, a chip comes with all these digital circuits like NAND gates, multipliers, ORs, RAMs. And you can wire it up to whatever you would like um, to fit your design um, pretty rapidly, right? So rather than sitting with a breadboard and wiring it up by hand, you can use an FPGA to rapidly make a system. And they're pretty fast, 
right? I mean, I think when I started teaching even, you know, they had FPGAs with 180 nanometer gate lengths, then, you know, 90 nanometers. So you can buy very advanced technology, right? Uh, FPGAs. Um, so now, yep, there is an analog analog programmable array, although the company calls it something different. And you can do uh, op amps, um, you can wire up op amps. And just since I think it's neat, I think I've shown you this tool before, but So this is a multiplier, this is a summer and low pass filter, right? I can change the cutoff frequency. I can program that on the fly. I don't have to set resistors. This is an uh, op amp based circuit that you can control all the parameters and, and redo. And it can even program itself based on certain conditions. So uh, FP, FPAA, Field Programmable Analog Array. And yeah, sorry if I'm a little tired. I had to get up early to drop my daughter off. Uh, she's leaving us to go to grad school. We actually had to take an early flight. So anyway, op amps is our thing. Um, with, but it's more, you know, the math. And then 132 dives deeper into that, right? Um, and Sorry. In all of this, right, 112 is not really a controls class, but the math is so similar to, it's kind of like the digital 110 almost. All right. So then we have 132, right, which is more, um, you know, at the system level, we're automating. But then how are we doing it, right? You know, this is like analog circuits. And then even into 124, how do we build the op amp? Now, yeah, uh, another circuit for automating. And you te we tend to, I think, um, undervalue the how much a good power supply how difficult an important power supply design is. So um, that's 136, right? And that is, you know, it's analog circuitry to make power supplies. Oh, someone's gonna tell me I'm wrong. Is it 138? Oh You're no. Fine. Okay, well, I wish. I hope he has a good visit. Anyway, we're recording. Hey, Alex. Nice to hear you. Hello. Good morning. And before we leave today, we have to pick a meeting time. For you. Sounds good. <laughs> so that you, you can see I'm getting busy and forgetful. So anyway, all right. So we have, um, you know, 110 feeds into 136, which is, yeah, that's, yeah, power, power systems, you know, so we're automating, you know, if I change a load, does the voltage remain constant under varying loads, right? So let's say um, if you didn't have that, right, you'd have to be adjusting some input voltage as somebody is changing the load on your circuit. Right, but you want that automatic. Well, that's a control system. Um, and yeah, just a simple linear dropout regulator, right? Actually has an op amp inside and some other things to make a stable voltage source, right? So we're automating, right? So that's, 
that's just one thing that we do, right? But again, there's automating, so we're automating the robot, but then the robot is automating something as well. There's communication systems, right? Which you could think of as automating, you know, rather than have to write out a message and here carry it, we can, you know, send it out kind of in an automated fashion. But um, so yeah, so we're moving data, we're moving big power, but um, but in that automating, let's just let's just talk about a pacemaker. Right, that's automating somebody's, you know, automatically trying to keep somebody's heart regular beating, right? Um, if we are trying to, control diabetes, right? Actually, if we could control the insulin level automatically, right? Um, but that means we need to test the sugar levels, we need to apply insulin and some kind of control feedback loop. So this automating, right, it's like probably, it could be one of the highest abstractions of what we do, but yeah, we make biomedical devices, we make robots, we make communication systems. And what can be hard the first time, you know, you do a big project is that, Right. If you look at a curriculum, you have engineering 10, which it's, it's like it introduces you to engineering and some bigger things. Right. But then you really have your math, chem, now those aren't the names, but there's four courses. Right. Then you have three physics than the chem, right? Which then will lead to 98, 97, right? Your first circuits courses. Um, all right, so you learn how to program, right? You don't learn what to program, right? What, what's a problem to solve? You learn how to use a microcontroller. You know, very, what I, and when I say low level, I mean, low level of abstraction, you know, you're doing a task that's um, very specific. But you start off with, you know, uh, the fundamentals of math and work all your way to differential equations. Chemistry um, really comes into Maddie 153, 128, right? which is kind of like how things work, right? Which is almost more of a continuation of, of physics, right? But because we use circuits so much, we actually design the processes to make these circuits work. So we have a lab, uh, the MPL, I'm the director right now. Um, and we got a big grant for a furnace and an etch tool where we're gonna make transistors. Right. So you might think that making transistors as a materials or a chemical engineering topic, but to really integrate a process into what really needs to be done, EEs are, are used. Right. Um, and then, yeah, you have your 112, 110, 118. Now, this is one path. The thing is, is that 140 electromagnetism falls into there as well. And what I'm saying is 140 is, it is more physics and it really is, right, the electromagnetic spectrum because there's things that we automate at a very high speed or we're communicating at 5G, right? Our nice circuit analysis where everything is a compact model 
resistors don't have capacitance, capacitance don't have inductance. It's very mathematically purely driven, right? All, you know, brought to you by Ohm's law, right? Ohm's law allows a lot of things to be much easily, more easily designed. But when the frequency gets beyond a certain point, you got to go to 140, right? And so then to continue, right? Um, we have 122, I mentioned 128, more physics, more in-depth physics. Now 112, um, yeah, it, it feeds into 102, it feeds into 160. And some of these things have multiple prereqs, right? Um, 118 is 120, which then feeds into senior design. And then I'm just going to say, and then there's a whole bunch of tech electives with crisscrossing prerequisites and things like that, right? So if you think about our program, and it's every program is like this, and it could be because you start off and it's so mathematically based, right? If you don't know how to add numbers, well, then algebra is probably going to become very difficult for you. If you can't do algebra, well, then you're not going to be able to do calculus. If you can't do one dimensional calculus, then vector calculus is going to be hard. So these prereqs are driven that way because there's really probably no other way to teach it, right? And the same with physics, right? Same with chemistry. And then we just keep going, right? And we start at the lowest level, like what are the electrons doing? And then finally in senior design, right? Hey, what should we be doing, right? Um, and so it can be a bit difficult, um, but everybody goes through this. Every engineering program does that. Um, what we try to do is have projects in 120 and 110 lab so that you're not um, completely uh, lost when you actually go to do something. But there used to be a thing where they would teach you everything you should know and then ask you to design something, by which time the students would have forgotten whatever it was they had learned. So modern curriculum, you're trying to show the applications as you go along, right? Um, but if, you know, now we're asking, let's actually solve a big problem. So if we take one of our problems that we mentioned, right? Right. And then another thing too, right? Is not only are we automating, but are we making it lower power? Are we making it faster? Or is it a higher temperature? Things like that. But taking, taking care of people with dementia, right? How can... Um, so what can EEs do for dementia? I mean, certainly quite a lot, right? But, um, but you're probably not gonna start writing differential equations to, to work on that, right? What I have people do, you know, is, Talk to family members of patients, right? What do, what do they see as like the real problem, right? And so there's things like uh, safety, oven, well, I should say falling is the problem, right? Um, outside dangers. So the thing is, is, so let's say we've had a conversation 
and, and what you do is before you would do a big survey, you just talk to a few people and get some ideas, right? Then you might even talk to who would probably know better, healthcare professionals. They have things called traveling nurses who go around from home to home to home. And they, they would tell you this, this is my number one complaint of family members, right? But let's, let's say it was the oven, right? Well, automatically control the oven. Okay, so now, right? Hey, we're getting into automatic, right? We have a million ways to automate things. We have op amp circuits, um, FPGAs, microcontrollers, right? We could, um, which then, yeah, you gotta have sensors. Is the is the oven off or on? Timing, um, but then you know. human interaction, right? How is that gonna fit in, right? So you would do pilot studies and things like that to, to see, all right? But um, once you have the thing to make, well, it needs a power system. How is it gonna communicate, right? Maybe if it's been on for too long, um, is it gonna be connected directly to the Wi-Fi? Um, is it actually gonna connect via Bluetooth to something? that then connects to the Wi-Fi. And then, yeah, I can't even believe I didn't mention this. Security, I think, you know, right, will the day come where you can't turn on your stove because you've fallen victim to a ransomware attack? You gotta pay some Bitcoin to, to unlock your stove, right? Or to un unlock your car. So, um, so yeah, we're trying to, what are EEs trying to do? We're trying to automate security. What are the hackers doing? They're trying to automate breaking the security, right? So from a cynical point of view, it's a never ending thing. So if you go into cybersecurity, you should always be uh, well employed because there'll always be a need as long as we're not living in a dystopian society. Okay, so I'm just gonna read through the chats a little bit. Right, so Alex says biomedical, right. So it's its whole subfield and a lot of EE programs split up into EE and then the applications of biomedical. At San Jose State, the biomedical program split off from chemical and materials engineering. And so there's not a lot on the circuit end, okay. Uh, machine learning, right. So machine learning, which I haven't mentioned, right? But to me, is this a form of automating the anal anal analysis of data, right? Um, IMO. I'm sorry, Alex. what's IMO? You're gonna In tell my me. opinion. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> <sighs> I'm sorry. I'm not a boomer, but sometimes I. Oh, no, you're fine. Way. It's not you. <laughs> All acronyms should be written out the first time. No, no, no. I think no, no. In that one, I should know. Okay, so um, I think that so that was just like one way of abstracting, like you know, automating, right? Now you could also think. What's another level of abstraction is you know, we could say powering, right? And why, why is it the trend to try to power everything in electricity, right? Well, here's the thing, even though there's 40% loss on uh, transmitting power, right, over PG&E lines, and they uh, can cause wildflower, not wildflowers, fires, right? Um, Electricity, you know, if you look at the, the entropy of it, 
is very useful medium to get things done, right? So if you have the thing, if you have the energy in the form of electricity, right? I'm looking at my CPAP machine, it can run that. It can heat my tea, right? I'm using electricity to talk to you now. If I had enough money, well, no, if I had enough money, I still wouldn't buy a Tesla, but I'd buy maybe some other electric car, right? Not to, um, but if let's say you have the form that, you know, your form of energy is logs, right? Well, you can burn the logs and now it's heat. And then heat has to be used to do something else, to do something else, to do something else, right? Uh, now, gasoline has a lot of uh, energy uh, per kilogram, right? Very energy dense. But um, having a gasoline, you know, one, there's the making of the gasoline, the transportation of the gasoline. And yeah, we have to say what is worse? If the equivalent of an oil spill for an electric line, I guess, is a California wildfire, which is pretty severe, right? But um, when all the, uh, like when you have a coal plant, right? All, when you have one of their, um, holding ponds break, you just poison things forever, right? Um, and yeah, it's with the California wildfires, yeah, they turn the lines off during high danger times. They're putting things underground, which makes it less efficient, but it's probably a much easier problem to solve, right? Or if rather than huge transmission lines, things were more locally powered, you know, that might be a, a problem, uh, a solution. So um, electricity is just, you know, incredibly efficient. But even looking at a car, right, you think about with a gasoline powered car, you need a transmission, you need an engine that can withstand the explosions of the, the combustion cycle, and you need oil, right? Um, an electric car, right, you don't necessarily need all that. And why are the gas cars maybe cheaper than the electric cars uh, besides the raw materials? Well, you know, not to get political, but we're not really paying the true cost of our carbon um, usage. Although maybe in California we are. Um, it's just, although, I don't know, it looks like it's not so smoky right now. But, um, you know, a lot of people lost their houses and we were basically the whole country was on smoke this summer because of, you know, Western California, um, Western wildfire fires. So um, that might have been a bit stream of consciousness, but I think when you're working on, you know, you're trying to come up with what to do you have to kind of be a bit of stream of consciousness, right? So how did we come up with these ideas? We were just kind of thinking about what we needed to do, right? And these are big problems that almost anybody could think about and say was a problem. Now, when we get into our research, right, we, Right. I said that one thing that we do is, is automate. Right. But um, what a lot of times at work, right, is let's take a course like 120. Well, what's a research topic? Well, making a better CPU or a better microcontroller, uh, coming up with a, a control algorithm that is, is more efficient. And so, um, you know, machine learning is a really kind of a hot topic right now, right? But you're so in depth and, you know, down in the, in the technical details of a machine learning algorithm 
you know, you might have forgotten that, well, we're just trying to reduce the power of automation, which we'll actually will use on a, um, let's say it was an EKG machine, right? We're trying to, we're trying to more quickly determine whether somebody's having a heart attack and maybe we can reduce the amount of data transmitted to make that decision, right? So um, when we talk about power systems, right? Professor Badawi, his whole research area is in more efficient power systems. So to kind of, you know, oversimplify, right? Um, everything electric needs a power supply. So if I make, you know, I can have a research topic making a more efficient power supply, right? It might have all these applications, but at work, you would be making a more efficient power supply, right? You might not be, now your system might be used <clears throat> in something that has, you know, some uh, social impact, which is kind of the very unique thing. In senior project, you know, we're asking you to, look into solving big world problems. Because one day you will be a leader in your company or you'll be a leader of your research team and you know, deciding what to do, where should we go, what should, you know, is a big thing. Um, and to circle back, if you look at, uh, I think it's Seagate's website, right? You could say their company, they make hard drives. But if you look at their promotional materials, right, they say they enable the entertainment industry, okay? And so to be a leader, you have to be able to think like that, right? And in Silicon Valley, know your technical stuff as well, right? Because your bachelor's degree could lead to a master's degree in EE or something else, or it could lead to an MBA, which is more leadership, right? You, is, um, you could be a professor one day, right? Um, although most likely that is the last thing on your mind. It was on mine. I would have laughed in your face if you had mentioned that to me as an undergrad. Um, but I think that's pretty much what I have for today. And that's just, like I said, we came up with brainstorming last time. What should we do? But then like, what are the tools in our toolbox to get things done, where mostly most students, the first time they're given this is they think, well, how do I use that microcontroller? What can I do with a microcontroller? What can I do with an op amp? When it's like, what problem needs to be solved? Oh, you know, an FPGA is the best solution. No, an op amp is the best solution, right? Let the problem dictate it rather than like I said at the beginning, hmm. where did I say that? It's really good too. Well, I know what I said, and that is, is Right. If all you know is a hammer, right? Every problem looks like a nail, which is an old joke, right? Now, yeah, our tool set are you could say digital math and circuits. We have analog math and circuits. Um, but everything we do, right, we're, at some point, we're using the electromagnetic spectrum. Right. But let's just, you know, you say, you know, I really liked 120. Man, microcontrollers are my favorite. I want to do a project on microcontrollers. So you start here and then start looking for solutions. And that can work. 
but really start looking at the problems. And let's say you had 10, right? And this one and this one looked like microcontrollers would be the way to go, right? Well, then pick those two projects. So I'm just asking people to think, you know, kind of higher level. Because when you get to work, depending on the company, you're not allowed to think higher level till you know you go on farther in your career. Okay. And you got to use that muscle. Yep. So um, I'll read it out for the video. But Alex uh, writes, um, that is so important. Many people peg themselves into an implementation before totally understanding what they're trying to do. It limits the possibilities, right? And it's almost like, yeah, you go into a Toyota car salesman and no matter what, the solution will be a, to a new Toyota for you, right? But, um, but here's the thing, as time goes on, you might become an analog expert or a digital expert or supply chain expert, and you will have your, your niche, right? But you'll just, you know, kind of be automating, right? So does anybody else have anything else to say or? Yeah, I actually had a question. Um, yeah. So I think a lot of the, the fields that I'm interested in, they do require like a master's degree from what I'm seeing. Um, but at the same time, I kind of wanted to work for a few years before I went to graduate school. But I'm kind of curious because like if I end up going into a field that's not really my main, uh, I guess what I really want to go into, like how would that affect me? Because I know sometimes there are companies that, right, that do pay you to get a master's degree. But I mean, what if that company is not in your, your field of interest? You know, um, it is so hard to sit here in class and try to predict what you're going to be interested in and what's a trend and what you should do, right? But to answer the question, it, it's kind of like, well, can you get more information? And so there's something called an informational interview where you're not applying for a job. You're just trying to get information. So let's, uh, let's say you were interested in uh, analog circuit design, right? And you wanted to know that answer. Um, I could uh, introduce you to one of my friends at Analog Devices. And you could say, well, listen, um, should I get a master's degree or not? Well, here's what you should do, you know, and yeah, he would know our comp or, or they would know. Um, <laughs> they, they would know uh, whether to get a master's degree or what the career progression is, or you might find out that there's so many other jobs. The thing is, is in electrical engineering, you might think the only job out there is design. And maybe test, right? Because whenever we design something, we have to make it and test. But there's such a wide variety of things out there and you can't possibly teach them all, right? And we just want you to have, to know how to get things done. And then you can, then you can adapt to the situation as possible. So I know, yeah, I, I can't say I'm involved in it. But it has, it's a goal that I'm trying to get involved in is to everybody to be able to get an internship as an undergrad, right? Um, and so when you, sometimes at an internship, you find out you don't like this thing. But when you're there, you're meeting, you can talk to people in a non asking for a job environment and you can kind of find out, you know, hear them talk about it. I had gotten an internship in circuit design, digital circuit design, which was my dream job. But I felt after working there, people were a bit miserable and that I wasn't really gonna enjoy that the rest of my life. And that's when I started thinking about being a professor. So that internship actually told me to do something else, right? I've had somebody work at Intel and realize, you know what? 
they wanted to go into teaching as well, right? So I think I can't tell you the only what to do. I can tell you, except just to try to get more information. Um, and yeah, just so you know, I was trying to look at internships. I just Googled EE internship San Jose. And man, everything is coming up like they need a master's degree. And that's not true, but we do compete with our own grad students. Our undergrads compete with the grads and we compete with Cal Poly, Stanford, Berkeley. And we, you know, we, we compete well, but it can be difficult sometimes when you're looking at it to think, my God, I need a master's degree. What's more important is that after graduation, you need to keep your skills set current and it'll depend on the company. If you're working at a startup, they probably don't care as long as the job gets done. In a more bu bureaucratic place, they're gonna wanna see some uh, credentials. And again, a bureaucratic place, it might be a master's of business administration rather than a, a technical. But you, you really, probably have to have the job for some time and like, yep, I have this job, I'm doing it, but you know, I wanna tell people what to do. Okay, MBA, that's for you. And, uh, hold on, Alex wrote a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah so I and, it, and it's true, many companies will pay um, you can probably see that on their website. Um, yeah, and our friend Google, right? Electrical engineering, Wikipedia. I guess I was more, what I was talking about was more stream of conscious. Yeah. Um, just one thing to throw out there. Uh, NASA, for example, likes hiring people straight out of college after their bachelor's. So they actually have um, a kind of internship where you're kind of guaranteed a job after you graduate. And then they absolutely do pay for um, graduate school. Uh, so there's that plug in case you're, you're interested in that kind of thing. And um, the Honestly, I'm here because I was inspired by electrical engineers at NASA who like just have done everything. Like I describe it like an adult playground. They've done like IT security. They've done like laid the foundations of machine learning back in the, what was it, 80s? That wasn't like progressible until the Mechanical Turks came along. Um, just all kinds of crazy things, embedded systems, aircraft, you know, just crazy fun, so. The, the thing I was kind of curious about, though, too, was like the fact that, yeah, so the, the company does pay for your graduate school, but I thought that was mostly because they want you to, I guess, be more involved in the field that you're currently already working at. But I was just wondering, like, let's say I, I work for like one area, I end up going into one area, but I, I do know that the area that I want to go into is different from the, 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 the area that the company is working on. So I, that's kind of Right, it's almost like they're paying for a graduate school for me to go somewhere else eventually, which okay. I wasn't sure. Well, I can answer that one quickly. Is that even, let's just say analog circuit design at San Jose State, there's not 10 courses in that alone. Let's talk about digital design. There's not 10 courses in that alone. So there's probably no master's degree um, an EE, right, that would be so far afield from what you're doing that they wouldn't pay for it, right? Now, yeah, if you're kind of doing chip design and then you switch to computer science, machine learning, maybe not. But here's the thing, a look into grad schools and apply for jobs. You can always say no, <laughs> right? Somebody offers you a job and you're like, you know, I'd rather go to grad school. You just tell them no, just don't tell them at the last second, right? Don't be afraid to pursue multiple paths, okay? Even my own daughter, she applied to EE masters here, but she applied elsewhere. 
San Jose State accepted her first, but then somebody else gave her a better deal and poof, she's on a plane to elsewhere. So um, just you guys are really good and you, you deserve multiple opportunities and multiple things. And so it's not disloyal to, to, to pursue multiple things. In fact, they assume that you are pursuing multiple things. Okay. Okay. That, that does, that does make me feel better. Yeah. Right. And even Alex is right there saying kind of what I said, but that some will just let you do it to keep you happy. Um, there is this so-called talent shortage that gets talked about, which is driving me crazy because if there's a talent shortage, why doesn't every one of our people have, who want one, have an internship and a job by April upon graduation? People have, it's actually takes a lot of effort to get a job. Um, no matter how good you are, it's like at least five interviews before you figure it out. Um, maybe that's just natural. I, I don't know, but yeah, if all of a sudden you're the one that knows the thing, you have a little bit more power. Anyway, that's if that's it, maybe you guys can take off and Alex and I can, we got to set up a meeting because we are in fact in senior project. Thank you. Okay. All right, take care everybody. Have a good week. Thanks professor. Okay. Um, I would also like to talk to you about uh, advising for Mariel and I, but that can be later or over email what, or something. What kind of advising? Uh, for, for 198, a for senior project. Oh, you're doing a project. Yes. Okay. Um, let's make a special appointment for that. Okay. Yeah. Just letting you know. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, let's do Oh, wow. That's good news. <laughs> oh, I okay. I'll, good, I'll email have a you. Good weekend. With, with yeah. Laura. Yeah. All okay. right. And, and you're in town now. I am. Yes. Okay. Great. All right, see you later. All right. Bye. All right, bye. All right. You may want to end your recording. Oh, yeah, that's probably a good idea.